Kelly Kraft, Trump's last ambassador to Canada, warns that on Trump's first day, there is going to be a lot of pressure put on the Canadian border, and Canada should be watching out. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Trump's last administration, he had an ambassador to Canada whose name was Kelly Kraft, and she went on to bash Capellos the day of the election, talking about the impact that Trump will be having on the relationships with Canada. And she made some very, very good points, I find, and she also gave some very uh, unhindered opinions on what she thinks the the way that the uh, country should be approaching this new Trump administration. And she also talked a lot about NATO because uh, that was the questions that Vashi asked her. She opened up with the questions around NATO. As uh, President-elect Trump has been very vocal about the contribution of other countries to the military prowess of this uh, organization, this treaty alliance. So let's let, let's let her um, share some of her insights on the way President Trump thinks about the NATO and the 2% commitment that Trudeau and the Liberal governments have sort of sloughed off until 2032. So I think that Canada needs to look within. I'm going to talk about NATO again. Sorry about that, but I'm going to continue. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that Canadians understand a strong military is your way of deterrence, especially in the Arctic. Russia and China are not going to wait until 2032, as your Prime Minister has made the statement that he would have the 2% of the GDP by 2032, that's, that's, they're not going to wait. This is a real threat. I just want to reiterate that it is so important that Canada understands our enemies are not going to wait until you pay your 2%. And he wants those countries, the NATO countries, all of them to carry their weight so that Americans are not carrying the lion's share of the burden. And I can assure you that you will have no better friend than Donald Trump if you carry your weight. Now, of course, we can't be relying on any country at all to be protecting our borders, especially the North. We need to be relying on Canada and our own people. And I, as I sit here and I talk about this, see two major problems. First of all, because of the far left's dis- dislike of masculinity, we have a military that pushes away that kind of fighting spirit that's required to make your military respected worldwide. And secondly, we have the divisive politics of the far left liberals who have been breaking everybody down into little groups instead of bringing them together. So we lack a national unity. And that, those two issues are going to need to be addressed if we ever hope to survive as a nation, or if we even hope to not be taken over by another nation that has that identity. These things are important, they are imperative. And I mean, we have to look at the root of, of um, Donald Trump's logic. What the ambassador Kraft is saying is that he's putting America first. Well, I see no reason that we shouldn't be putting Canada first. That doesn't mean that we have to close our borders and become isolationist, but we certainly have to forge our national identity around a, a concept that permits us to protect and defend ourselves. I don't believe that relying on the United States is a is a wise idea any more than I believe relying on Greenland or relying on Britain is a wise idea. We are a nation, okay, we are a nation that is probably coming through a lot of divisiveness because of the far left tactic to try to divide us so that they can rule us all. But we can overcome that because we are we see what's happening and we understand what's going on and as a as a people we we have to stop celebrating what we have different and start celebrating what we have in common. But she asked Ambassador Kraft about the tariffs that uh, Donald Trump has alluded to or on any product coming into the United States, which of course we have to hope that we can get somebody in there that can negotiate an exemption for many of those tariffs. And we're not going to be getting an exemption for those tariffs if we bring something in from another country and simply pass it from one hand to another and put, you know, assembled in Canada on it. We have to start manufacturing things inside of Canada. We have to make sure that the product is made in Canada. I mean, right now what we do is we take the raw product out, we send it to another country, that country turns it into the finished product and then sends it back. 
we can leave that out of the equation. We can just start to manufacture ourselves. I mean, we're talking about a country that needs jobs. We're talking about a country that's economy is in decline, uh, eight out of the last nine quarters. So we're at, you know, at least two solid years, right? And uh, Donald Trump, being a businessman, understands this. And uh, he is trying to say that we want to make it less expensive for American products to be sold inside of America. And we have to sort of uh, help him along with that. We have to be able to get him to see us as a, a country that can provide products to the United States of America without infringing on American-made products. Just like we should be telling ourselves that we want to be manufacturing Canadian-made products without the United States infringing on that. Because what we're talking about with that tariff, then you pick up American uh, productivity, and the next thing you know, the Americans have a surplus that they're now flooding the Canadian market with because they have ma- ma- taken the time to invest in those in those things. And of course, we would, you know, we would need to readdress some of the far left liberal policies that are have been going up and down in this country. And I understand that. I understand as a nation we are wounded, and I understand as a nation we need uh, to find our identity. But rather than point our finger at Donald Trump and say, how, come, how dare you be doing things differently than the way that the you know, people from Switzerland have been demanding, what we have to tell ourselves is that we, we are going to go along with this. We also want to model our country into making Canadian-made products. We want to go into a store, we want to go into a, a region, and we want to see that it says made in Canada. Even if that means that we have to put industry back in this country, bring it home from China, even if that means bankers make a little bit of less money, I'm all right with that. Now, Ambassador Kraft says something that's very interesting to you and I. She talks about what Donald Trump is going to be doing on his first day, and that's essentially going to be shutting the border, especially the land borders. And we have right now a lot of people that are coming into Canada to sneak into the United States, but there are also a lot of people in the United States that are looking at the election of Donald Trump that are being watched by their uh, regional uh, law enforcement who are going to be rounded up and deported. And those people are, might end up trying to come north. And that's what Ambassador uh, Kraft is going to discuss. I have to touch upon this border issue because I noticed that the Prime Minister has now decreased the amount of immigrants into that will be coming into Canada. I'm not, but you have to understand, day one, President-elect Trump is going to shut down our border. But I can tell you on day one, when we start deporting illegal immigrants, they will be coming over the northern border into Canada. And I think it's vitally important that you understand that you need to strengthen your borders because I can tell you what's coming in on our southern border are bad actors. We have terrorists, we have people from prisons, we have fentanyl coming over our border, human trafficking, and they're going to have to flee somewhere. And I believe it'll be over the northern border. And I believe, I agree with her. I think that they will be trying to run north right now. Now, there'll be less of an infrastructure, of course, and there'll be some regions that won't have the ability to uh, absorb them, which is something that, the Americans have they have because they have states that are independent they all have major cities everywhere whereas Canada's major cities are all in the you know mostly primarily in the bottom five percent of the country so that creates more burden on the municipalities the larger municipalities cities like Calgary will start to feel a burden Toronto Vancouver though they already have an establishment on those problems and people coming across the border to escape the the um Donald Trump, elect, President-elect Trump, are going to be people who are already operating outside of the system. They're not going to be people who are like, here I am, let me enter the country, let me fill out these documents, and let me try to become a citizen. These are going to be people like, if I get caught, they're going to put me on a plane and they're going to send me back to my country of origin or whatever you know region that they happen to be coming from. And as Canadians, we have to ensure that our very long, very wide open border can be defended and can be protected by Canadians because I don't believe the American uh, border patrol is going to be worried about who's leaving. I think they're only going to be worried about who's coming across. And the rocks and road incidents will begin to prop, uh, crop up all across our very uh, porous border. So I have to concur with her that this is something that we should be ready and able to defend against because if we get in a large infusion of people who are trying to escape the United States in, in the 1st of January because they realized that they should have you know, followed the legal routes and gone into the United States that way. 
that's going to put it in already uh, going to put additional strain on, on an already struggling system. It's going to break many of the major cities. It's going to cause us to have even more of a, of a differential between um, those that have places to live and those that do not. So I know that everybody out there is trying to scare you into thinking that Donald Trump is something, but he's not, I mean, in my opinion, he doesn't present to me as anything other than a guy who just wants to look after his own. And if you're out there listening to this and you tell yourself, well, I don't want to look after my own, then I guess you, you know, you're probably listening to the wrong person. I believe that we should be looking after our own just as well. I think that the, uh, the way to get along with the, the Americans is to agree with their philosophy of let's build a good economy, let's make housing and food inexpensive, let's look after the needs of the people, and then the people can become happy and content, and they will go about their day, and we can, you know, bring the the model back to where it should have been before this far left insidious Marxist ideology began to creep into the West. If I was, uh, you know, a betting man, I would I would have to think that she's probably in the ninety percent correct based on, you know, what I understand about about the philosophy of Donald Trump's presidency, the country has swung it firmly into the camp of common sense. I mean, I hear them when I'm watching them on the little clips, they use the word common sense all the time, which I suppose is a, a tip of the hat to Pierre Polyev's common sense uh, campaign that he's been running and would have already been prime minister should Justin Trudeau ever find the courage to call an election or Jagmeet Singh ever call, find the courage to force an election. I suppose that's a different video. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.